I want to go ahead and start introducing my first set of speakers for this, for this morning. To kick us off, uh, we have a power couple who are doing some incredible work right here in this city of Chennai, this great city of Chennai. A power couple who work to empower those who are disabled, disadvantaged, right? They work specifically in that area. And that's the amazing part of God, right? God calls us to fill and make a difference in unique places in society. This couple works with the disadvantaged. This couple works with those with challenges. They run uh, uh, an NGO called Agape Center. Uh, they look at skilling the, the people who have these disadvantages. And they've been doing it for several years. They've, they've touched the lives of more than 2,000 people that even the government of Tamil Nadu has given them the best NGO award. To share their story, I would, I would request you to put your hands together for this power couple this morning, um, Sister Avita and her dear husband, Mr. Daniel. You can do it better, Chennai. Put your hands together for our first speaker. God bless. Thank you. Good morning. What a privilege and an honor to be standing here before you to talk about how the Lord has enabled us to work for persons with disabilities through Agape in the past 29 years. Uh, I'm Avita, and uh, if you had asked me while I was in college what I planned to do, all I would say is eat, sleep, and be merry. Because that was my plan, okay? I'm just an ordinary person. So when I accepted the Lord in my heart, I told Jesus, Lord, my whole life is before you. You have given me so much. I was so filled with gratitude. God gave me good parents, good church, good education, good health. And all these things, out of gratitude, I told the Lord, Lord, my life is before you. Use it as you want. It was as if like God was waiting for me to finish that prayer. So just after I said that prayer, God opened doors for me to work in a place teaching computers to disabled persons. And there I also uh, received training in rehabilitation. And uh, I, we met, I met my husband. And then we knew that God has a plan together. So we together uh, after marriage, when my son was uh, Samuel Tanosh was uh, three years and my daughter Esther Sukita was uh, just three months old, we started Agape in a rented place. Uh, as still we are in a rented place, but God has blessed us through that, blessed uh, many disabled persons through that. When we got married in 1991 and for our first Christmas, we decided to celebrate it with persons with disabilities. So we invited about 20 of them to our home and we had a very great celebration uh, of the birth of Christ. And we continued doing that each year and the number was increasing more and more. And in 2018, we had 1,005 persons with disabilities in one group celebrating Christmas together. And then we thought, we should be more effective. So we divided that into four Christmas get-togethers in the last five years, each time ce uh, celebrating Christmas with about 1,000 persons with disabilities. Uh, one group is uh, people with locomotor disability, physical challenges. And then the next one is blind persons, deaf persons, and persons with intellectual disabilities. These are the groups that we teach computers to, and they and their friends come for these early programs. That's how we have progressed. We started uh, with persons with physical disabilities, then God enabled us to pioneer teaching blind people computers, and then of late, we are using computers as a therapy for persons with intellectual disabilities. Then I want to talk about the success stories. This is our Christmas day program. This is a computer training that we do. And let me talk about Ratna Gopi, who comes from a small village in uh, Nagar Koyil. His uh, uh, mother is a deserted uh, single parent, and he has two smaller siblings. He finished his ITI, and he was looking forward for a job. But nobody would give him a job. He felt very dejected. And uh, a sense of 
worthlessness came into him and he had suicidal thoughts. But accidentally, he saw in a newspaper, Agape Rehabilitation Center is offering free computer training course. He came to Chennai and his life was transformed. Now he works in ISRO as a technician. The same way we can see Muruga Lakshmi there. She was born blind and her own mother and grandmother wanted to kill her because she would be a burden to the family and society. She was unwanted. The affection of, of her father saved her and she came to MTB and finished her college. Through MTB, another organization, she came to Agape to learn computers. And now you can see that she is teaching computers to other blind people. So that is the way we uh, transform people. We can see in the next slide that we have a very special person, Oscar. He had lost both his hands and we helped him uh, learn computers using his feet. Now he is managing a DTP center in Calcutta. So these are the things that we are able to do by the grace of God. So, I, I like to talk about Aparna. She is a person uh, affected by polio and she is a wheelchair user from Dharmapuri. So, when she heard about the free computer training, she asked her father, uh, she always pestered them to come home, come home, send her to Chennai to study. So, she stayed in our hostel. She studied computers and typewriting, went back to her place and then she started her own computer center and now there are 33 students studying there and she trains them in computers and typewriting. And one thing she told us, Madam, three people I'm giving free training. She received free training and now she's giving free training for others. So the other person is uh, Kalaiwani. Uh, when uh, Lakshmi Devi, another disabled person, so many times by word of mouth, people bring disabled persons to our center. So she, Lakshmi Devi brought Kalaiwani to our place and she said, Madam, I told her if she comes to Agape, something good will happen to her. Then I am looking at her and I am saying, what, what good will happen? Because it is my limited thinking that is working. But we have an awesome God who works everything for good and he is going to do everything, so we, I, which I didn't realize. So she didn't even pass her 10th at that time. So she came and she was crying because uh, she was staying in her brother's house and they thought this disabled sister is a burden and what can we do with her. To make the long story short, now she is earning about 30 to 40,000 per month. She is married and she is happy in the Lord. So uh, one, one other thing that we do all the time is have a monthly gathering. We started a monthly gathering in front of her house in a thin with just three people or four people coming, four disabled persons coming. We'll have tea together and talk for some time. Now, this monthly program has grown so much that nowadays we have about 250 or 260 disabled persons coming in every month. So we have three different programs based on their disability. And one is for intellectually disabled persons and their parents, they come as families to these programs. They are so happy to come, they come in their best attire. And uh, that is because they are not invited anywhere else. So sometimes even when relatives have some functions, they say, don't bring your disabled child. So, so they, but when they come here, or if, uh, we, they, they feel so welcomed here. And even if they, if they cannot come, then we'll call them and say, we missed you. They like to be missed. So they come and they, uh, that is a good fellowship. Then we have a program for physically disabled persons where about 60 to 70 of them. So not only our students, any disabled person is welcome to these gatherings. So they just go tell everybody, why don't you come there? Why don't you come there? Like that, it has grown. So, and then uh, I don't know how many of you came here one and a half hours early for the program. Anybody? I just see one or two hands there. So uh, we have a deaf get together every fourth Sunday and about 160 to 180 deaf persons will come and attend this program. And there'll be at least 20, 30 people waiting one hour before we start the program. They are so eager to come. They don't have such fellowships. 
so they are so eager to come for these gatherings so and they are so joyful and i if you are in chennai i just invite you to come and join us in these programs the more often question that i am asked is how do you do this so uh i think this is a no brainer because our uh, the name of the organization gives us out agape god's love the god who died for me who took away my sins has poured his love into me and i want to express his love by sharing it with others so that is something which comes uh which should which has been coming to me very uh, easily that i want to love others because he first loved me and that doesn't mean that everything is very very easy for me there are so many difficult circumstances and situations at that time we can cling to the promise which says his grace is sufficient for you and of course as all of us know prayer is our lifeline we depend upon prayer we pray each day we pray with and for persons with disabilities and what are the other principles that we follow one is to have disabled person first give, to give them the priority to have their interest first in any activity that we plan if that is the case then it uh, leads on to being a friend to a person with disability and for that jesus is our model if you look in the gospels closely you can find 31 instances of jesus intentionally stopping and having a conversation with person with disability touching them spending time with them that is being a friend that is asserting to them that they are made in the image of god as we are all so in that way we are all equal we are all made in the image of god so uh, talking about equality we always make sure that the students feel that we are all equal so we have uh, as i said we have a small hostel about 10 or 12 people maximum can stay with us in the ground floor and we are staying in the first floor so uh, we eat the same food that the hostel students have uh, just to make sure that the quality is also maintained so when a uh, new uh, person a new student came into the hostel the first day we were having tea he came slowly and peeped into my husband's tea cup then when we asked him why are you peeping into the tea cup then he said i just want to check whether you are having the same tea or whether you are drinking some other special tea so we are dealing with young people who look at our actions so we have to be very careful and uh, all the time 24/7 but unfortunately if you think that we are like okay very good goody goody then i have to tell you something to bre- uh, break the balloon so one one time uh, analakshmi a student with a spinal injury she uses a wheelchair she came to me and she said madam i want to tell you something she said okay then she said madam yesterday you and sir were arguing and shouting loudly i heard everything <laughs> how embarrassing it was i don't know what i replied to her but not that we stop stopped arguing or shouting we only closed the door and windows and did that in secret okay so god uses us in spite of who we are okay he i always tell god maybe lord uh, how come you are still uh, managing with me you you should have easily thrown me out but god is a god, patient god and even the lesson one in patience he keeps teaching me again and again and again i always say that we are two zeros and we have one powerful great god one and only god who stands beside us that makes us a hundred so again with if god is not by our side we are just zeros again so one verse that always motivates me is uh, matthew 7:12 do unto others as you would like others to do to you so whenever i meet a person in a wheelchair i think what if i am the person coming in a wheelchair how would i like others to interact with me how would i like others to treat me then then maybe say a word of prayer in our heart and we know exactly what to do so the bible tells us exactly what to do and how to do it so when you meet a blind person just exchange places then we know exactly how to do 
we learn sign language from our deaf students we used to ask them how do you do this write and show or something like that so it's 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 over time that we learned how to interact with them and that is god's blessing and many times we keep praying for love god to fill us with his love so that we can be more loving towards everybody and uh, uh, we also uh, i just want to tell you that according to the world health organization in any given population 10 to 15% of people live with some disability or the other that means if there are 100 people in a place 10 persons with disability should be there inside but unfortunately this is a hidden group we don't find them at all we don't find them they are the missing group we if we have 10 friends make sure you have a friend with a disability also how did this happen how do we be able to as individuals as couple reach out to people in the marketplace i think god used our experiences or my experience i was born with a hole in the heart i had a very difficult childhood full of sickness i had many limitations i had uh, delayed milestones i started walking when i was four and i uh, started talking even later and would you believe me i had a problem of stammering and stuttering and i cannot utter a word in front of a audience like this but god just enabled me molded me and used my uh, my uh, difficult circumstances i underwent open heart surgery in 1980 almost 44 years to date in chennai gh in a government hospital and underwent one year of uh, post op care because of that but i could empathize with all these sufferings in a small way with the physical disabilities and limitations of persons whom i serve friends all the experiences that god allows in our life we can use that for his glory if only like uh, we, like i did listen to him obey his call and surrender to him be available to him and ask him to use the skills that he has given to you i am sure there are all your all the people that are listening to us are much more talented than we are if you can listen to god's still voice calling you and submit to him he will use your experiences to reach out to a particular group of people at least the people around you the neighborhood god would definitely be able to use you as he has used us may god be glorified and i hope you learn and appropriate these lessons and the lessons from all the other speakers to follow may god bless you thank awesome you. thank you so much uh, brother daniel and sister abita if you could just remain on stage if you could just remain on stage um amazing story i'm going to request danny and preeti to come and uh, uh celebrate them and uh, felicitate them for this wonderful story this is a story of what what god can do with Thank people you. who are willing Thank and available ladies us. and gentlemen put your hands Thank together you. for sister Thank avida you. and daniel agape <laughs> rehabilitation center <laughs> okay it says hope builders and that's what they are Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.